In this video, we will create a fresh 5.3 Unreal Engine top-down project. We will use Map Baker Utility Actor to bake the layout of our map, and we will see how Fog Manager and Character Tracker component work together to create light around the character. Lastly, we will see how any type of actor can be assigned to act as either an enemy or a beacon to the player. We will begin by creating a new C++ project. It will be a top-down and we will call it FOW Tutorial. Once the project is open, we need to set up a couple of things. First, we need to enable Niagara Fluids plugin. So we will go to Plugins and search for Niagara. Here we will tick Niagara Fluids, select yes, and before we restart, we will also copy our Fog of War plugin. Here we have the download, we will extract it, and we will copy Fog of War folder. Back in our project, we want to go to the root directory. We will right click on content and we will show in explorer. Here we will create a new plugins folder. And paste our new floor. Now we can restart the editor. Back in the editor, we should now see our plugins folder with our Fog of War subfolders. If we don't, we need to go to settings and make sure that show plugins content is checked. The first thing our Fog of War plugin needs is a map layout texture, which is a black and white texture describing which parts of our floor can receive light. To do this, we will go to plugins folder open Fog of War content and go to Map Baker. Here we have BP Map Baker Blueprint. We will drop it to the scene. We see in settings of Fog of War Baker that we have a couple of things to set. First, we need to make sure that our map size matches the, our actual world size. To check this, we will go to Top Perspective. We will hold Middle Mouse Click and see that we have around 3000 centimeters for the width of the map, which matches our map size. So we have nothing to change there. We'll go back to perspective. And the other thing we need to set right now is this variable is map centered. In our case right now, we have a map which starts at the world 000 location, meaning that the bottom left corner of the map is at zero. So we do not need to check anything. However, if we start at a new level, make it a basic level, save this, and if we drop the map baker to this level, we would see that it is positioned incorrectly, because our world is actually centered, meaning that the uh, lower left corner is at the minus something, and the center of the map is at the zero. So in this case, we would need to check, if we go to baker, we need to check his map centered to position the camera at the center of the world location. We will go back to our top-down map. And now that we have our camera in the correct location, we need to tell it uh, what are all our floors. So in this case, we will take these dark gray meshes, select all of them, search for their tags. Here, we will add a floor tag. So all capital letters. Now if we select again our map baker, we clear up this and we press bake. If we open the RT map, we will see that we now bake our texture, which says that these are our floors in the white and only this part of the map can receive light.
Now that we have baked our map layout, let's add an object which will act as a vision occluder for the player. To do this, we will take this blue box and move it on the floor. We will give it a vision occluder component, which is a special fog of war component, which marks this object as a vision occluder. What this component does is it sets a stencil on this object to one. So if we go to rendering, we'll see that this property, render custom depth path, is now ticked for this object and the custom depth stencil value is set to one. Before we do anything else, we need to enable stencil for our project. So we'll go to edit product settings and we'll search for stencil. Here we need to make sure that enabled with stencil is checked. So not enabled, not enabled on demand, but enabled with stencil. Now if we go back to our map baker and we bake again, we will see that our RT map has picked up on our box and it is in black. This part of the map will no longer receive light. Alright, now that our render target is baked, we can actually add our main component to the level. We'll go to our fog directory and look for fog manager. This sector is responsible for actually adding the fog to our level. We'll drag it to the scene and we will see that again, similar to map baker, we have some settings to set. First, again, we have is map centered. As we discussed before, we don't need to set it for this exact map. We have the map size, which is the same. And we have character visibility radius, so how much light there is around the character. The last property is floor map texture. It's not mandatory. If we do not set it, the manager will by default use the render target. And that is a bit less performant. But since we baked our textures, we can use those instead. For now, we will leave it as is, so we will not change anything here. Next, we need to tell our Fog of War manager who our main character is. To do this, we will open the character blueprint and we will add the BP tracker component to it. If we go back to our map and start our game now, we will see that now we finally have the light around character and our fog casting object is creating shadows as well. Using the magic of editing, we now have a bit more floor area. Basically what we did is copy and paste the existing floors. We still have the tags, floor on them, and we went to the plugin folder, we went to content, map baker, and we baked the map again so that it includes the new areas. We did this so we can add the enemy actors and have enough room for all of them. So what we'll do next is we will add the world's most boring enemy actor, a regular cone. We'll drag a cone to the scene. Now to turn this cone into an enemy, we will give it a tag. This is not required by the Fog of War manager, but it will make it easier for us to find this actor from our blueprint. Let's call it whatever. Dangerous enemy. And let's make sure we copy this tag. So now, back in our top-down character, we will take our BP tracker component and what we want to do is call a sign enemy on it. So when 
we call begin play, we first want to find the, all the actors which have our tag, dangerous enemy. Once we have all of them, or in this case the only one, the cone, we will iterate them and for each one we will assign the enemy. Now, one last thing that we need to do in order for this actor to become the enemy. We need to make sure that it generates overlap events. So what we will do is we will search for generate overlap events and we will tick it. Now if we start the game this enemy should be invisible until we are close enough to see it. Adding a friendly beacon is relatively similar to enemies. This time we will use a sphere. We will throw it in the scene and we will again give it a tag. This time let's call it a friendly sphere. We will copy this tag And in our character, we will look for all the actors with friendly sphere tag. We will now continue from begin play with a sequence so that we get all the enemies and beacons. Again, we will do for each. And this time we will call assign beacon. Compile, save. One last thing that Beacon needs compared to the enemy is a Beacon component. This is again a special component which tells Fog Manager who the Beacons are for the current player. Let's start the game. 